Yay! I love this book. This is our newest book from Slimming World. I am so excited. I'll tell you why, because it's menus all ready to go for you. On each page, you have a breakfast, a lunch and a supper. So for me, that works brilliantly. I'm sure a lot of you always sort of standing in the supermarket going, what am I going to cook? I don't know. I want new ideas. This is the book for you. There's over 180 meal ideas in here. When I say meal ideas, some are actual recipes and others are just sort of assembly jobs, as I call them, which is what we're going to do with the first recipe that we're doing from it. There's different sections. There's vegan, there's vegetarian sort of section to it. There's also a sort of chapter on if you're tight on a budget, what can you make, which is great, and portable foods, which we're going to do today. So page 74 and 75, back at the ranch, is what we're going to do. And we're going to do a mango and blueberry bowl, tuna and corn muffins, and then Cajun bacon pasta with ranch dressing. So should we get cooking? Or not, as the case may be, because we're going to just be assembling. So, 40 grams of our Dorset cereal, simply nutty muesli is what I'm starting with. But I personally love a bit of um, Weetabix, two Weetabix proteins, or 40 grams of shreddies, or 45 grams of bran flakes. Have a look at your healthy extra bees and see which ones you want to do. That's your fiber that you get into your diet each day. In the book, we've got a few healthy extra A's as well in there, which is for your calcium. So I'm making three portions here. So there's 40 grams already weighed in there. Then you can top it with fat-free Greek yogurt, or if you prefer natural yogurt, because it's a bit thinner, then go for that. So again, because it's fat-free, you can add as much as you like. So there we go, good dollop. Then it's a choice of fruit. Obviously it's called mango and blueberry bowl, so I'm gonna use those fruits, but you can use banana, grapes, you could use kiwi, I don't know, raspberries, blackberries, whatever's in season, try and use that. Now mangoes, everyone's always a bit confused with mangoes. There's a big stone inside the mango, and what you have to do is take the cheeks off the mango. So if I look at it, I've got the sort of stalk of the mango towards me, and then I'm just gonna run my knife sort of slightly off center down the side like so, and then rotate it and do it the other side. And if you hit the stone, don't worry, just go around it. So in there, there's a stone poking my knife. You can cut those little bits off. They're chef's treats, as I call them. And then there's two ways of doing this. So you can either get a big spoon. Now, if you've got a metal spoon, it tends to be a bit better, but I'm just using this one. And you just use that to get out the flesh, and then you can sort of chop that however you like. So on this occasion, we're going to do nice chunks, like so. And we'll put some of those on there. And then there's another technique, which we call the hedgehog technique. Be really careful that you don't cut through the flesh to your hand. So I tend to leave it on the chopping board. And then you just score up to the skin with the mango. Then you rotate it, and you sort of rotate it 90 degrees, and then go in a crisscross fashion, like that. And then you can just flip it inside out, take off the cubes. You can either do it with your fingers, get your kids involved, always fun. And also, if you get your kids involved, they're more likely to eat the food as well with you, which is great and helps you keep you on your food optimizing plan. There we go. And then we just need a few blueberries. And I'm serving that with lime wedges because it needs a little bit of acidity for me, just to bring out the sweetness of those mangoes. And there we have it. How quick is that? Assembly cooking, we love. We're gonna do tuna and sweet corn muffins and this is one of my favorite recipes because it's literally got four ingredients. And I'm gonna talk through different ways that you can adapt it depending on how you feel. That's the great thing about this Happy Days book. It's got the different menus in there, but if, for example, you don't like one of the lunches in the menus, you can just swap it with any other menu in the book for a different lunch, which is great. So that's why it's Happy Days. So we're gonna take a muffin tin. And now a lot of people have non-stick ones, and if you wanted to and you sort of trust your tin, you could just spray that with low calorie spray. Um, you could line it with muffin cases if you want, but 
Here's a little hack. If you've just got greaseproof paper, you can just cut a square and all you need to do to make sure you've got the right size is sort of put it in the middle, press it down and see that you've got enough space for the ingredients to be not overflowing. I also tend to sort of scrunch them up because then when you come to pour it in, it sort of gives it a bit more stability in there. So I'm going to do that with all of mine. And also they look a bit more pretty and when you want to take them to work, it's kind of cool because you peel it and then you can eat it. A bit like, a, you know, if you've got a wrap or something, it's got a bit of an outer layer to it, which helps. So there we go. We've got four in there. This recipe actually makes two. But if you did use the whole can of tuna and the whole can of sweet corn, you'll probably end up with four. So let's see how we go. So two large eggs, which just crack into a jug. It's important to use a jug because we're going to pour it literally into the muffin tins. This is 150 grams of fat-free cottage cheese. And I love cottage cheese because it's sort of got that acidity to it as well, which gives it an extra dimension. So you just whisk those together. I mean, how easy is this? You can get your children involved with this as well. And then this is tuna. So, oh, we'll just put the whole thing in. The good thing is you can sort of batch cook and then these will freeze up really nicely or you can just sort of keep them in the fridge up to about three days and eat them as you go. So I might make a breakfast one. Sometimes what I do is I get ham that's got no visible fat and I sort of line the case with it and then I make that egg and cottage cheese mixture, put some chives or parsley in it and I pour it in that's like a breakfast muffin for me. Maybe take the whisk out and just give it a stir. And you can see how thick that mixture is. And that's it. I mean, that's literally two, three minutes tops to make that. And that's what I love about it. If you don't like tuna, you could use smoked salmon or smoked trout or even prawns. You know, it's great if you just want to use up odds and ends in your fridge. So, you know, you might want to make a vegetarian one out of grated courgette, defrosted peas out the freezer and a brisk spring onion or something like that. Or another vegetarian one would be roasted butternut squash and onions and peppers. And again, just use that cottage cheese and egg base. So there you go, that's it. Right, let's put that in the oven. They're gonna take 25 minutes, depends on your oven, 20 to 25 minutes. You just want them to be set and nice and golden brown. It's going in a 180 oven, gas mark for 160 fan. So pop that in and there we go. So let's have a little look about the tuna and sweet corn muffins. Just give them a little push and if they're slightly soft in the middle that's great because you don't want them overcooked. And there you go, how delicious are they? Uh, there's one, there's two. I mean bear in mind these are all free foods. As long as you fill a third of your plate with lovely salad or vegetables you can eat as many as you like. Now uh, of course I'm going to try and tuck into it, it's probably going to be a bit hot. But let's go for it. Mmm. This is one of my favorite recipes from this book, I have to say. Four ingredients, get cooking it, it's great. We're gonna do the Cajun bacon pasta with France dressing, yes. At last I've managed to get that right. We've been having a discussion behind the scenes about what your evening meal is called. Is it called tea, dinner or supper? Well, whatever it's called, it's the evening meal that I'm doing. But remember with the Happy Days cookbook, you can swap all those suppers, dinners, teas around to make it whatever you want and what you fancy. So we have pasta here. I generally work with about 100 grams of dry pasta per person. So if you want to multiply it up, you can. I've used penne here, but if you want to use um, anything that's easy to pick up with a fork, because you might want to take this to work the next day and it's never a good look trying to get spaghetti in your mouth, is it? So then we've got um, some back bacon and that's six rashers. I've just trimmed the bacon up uh, so there's no visible fat in there and I've just fried that in a bit of low calorie cooking spray until it's brown. Make sure you get that nice and brown. That's what adds flavour to your um, food. It's caramelised, you know, whether it's vegetables or meat. Uh, it just adds that extra note to it. And then we've got a bowl and I'm just going to start assembling really. It's pretty easy. So the bacon's going to go in. 
Oh yeah, I forgot to say, if you don't like uh, picking up bacon rashes and can't be bothered to trim it, there's something called bacon medallions. And I only discovered them about two years ago, but they're great, so they save on time as well. Then we've got pasta, so put that in. And then, you know, it's about what you can find in the fridge. I've got some radishes, that's about 125 grams, roughly chopped. I've got some cucumber. Uh, that's about half a cucumber, two sticks of celery. I know a lot of you don't like celery, so you could substitute that with something like grated courgette or carrot. And then this is a couple of spring onions that's also roughly chopped. And then let's make a dressing. So we've got five tablespoons of fromage fray and it's fat free. And then what we're going to add into it is a crushed garlic clove, which is easy. Again, if you don't want to crush it yourself, just get a frozen uh, products that you can get in the supermarket, just make sure it's got no oil in it. Then this is the zest and juice of half an unwaxed lemon. If your lemon's got wax on it, a really easy way to do it is just run it under um, cold water tap and then just use a clean scourer and go over it and that removes the wax. And then we've got a bit of Cajun um, seasoning. Now this is easily available, just look in the spice section in supermarkets. And again, it depends on how seasoned up you want it. Um, but I've added about that much. Just check there's no flour, oil or sugar in the product as well. Then you just give that a good stir. Try and get a bigger bowl than me, helps. And then we're going to just dress that salad. And because the pasta's warm, what happens is it sort of really sort of flavours it from the outside going in, which is great. Okay, then what we're going to do is take some pepper, our old friend pepper. Now if you want herbs, you know I always bang on about herbs. I love basil in this particular one, or coriander. If you're a coriander hater, try a bit of parsley. And then we're going to just toss that together. How lovely does that already look? It looks great, doesn't it? So then we are just going to put that in a lovely serving bowl. So you can take that to the table and people can help themselves or get ahead, you know, for your lunches. So then you can put this in an airtight container and you can take that to work if you wanted to. So there we go, there's a nice little serving bowl. Or just put it in the middle of the table for the family to help themselves to. You can have a nice big green salad at the side if you wanted to. Make sure you have at least a third of your plate full of vegetables or salad. And then we're going to really jazz it up now with some fresh um, chives. So I'm just snipping those with a, a pair of scissors. If you don't like chopping things, you know, you can chop quite a lot of things with scissors and it's quite safe to sort of do that because I know some of you don't feel comfortable using a knife. And then spring onions, scatter those over. Again, if you haven't got spring onions, red onion, finely sliced. And then I'm just going to add a little bit more of that Cajun seasoning at the side. And why not put an extra pot on the, on the uh, table and then if people want to add more, they can. So there's the end dish and it's just lovely and summery and hopefully everyone enjoy it. But if you don't want to have that as your main meal, there's loads in here. Just swap all the menus around if you wanted to and the meals in there because they're all free food, so everything's interchangeable. 180 meal ideas. I mean, two months worth of menus. Isn't that great? So you can just pop that in your bag. If at lunchtime you don't know what you're going to have for dinner, you can just flick through it and choose. So go out and try the Happy Days cookbook. It's great.